Hey guys, welcome back to Roto Renovations, where today we're going to be adding a non-load bearing wall to make a closet and a fourth bedroom for this house. Here we go. Because our new closet will share what is now our garage walls, we'll have to tear out the existing drywall so we can add insulation. Once we finish the insulation, we could put the drywall back up and then open up our hole where our new closet door is going to go. Now that I have a new point of entry for the closet, I can close it up with a non-load bearing wall. Here's an image of what the non-load bearing wall will look like when it's constructed. You'll start by placing the bottom plate where you want the new wall to be, making sure it's square with the adjacent walls. And then I have a slab foundation, so I'm going to pre-drill and then attach the bottom plate with concrete screws. If you don't have a hammer drill, I recommend borrowing one from a friend or renting it from a store because it'll make your life way easier when you're pre-drilling for the concrete screws. We're using treated lumber for the bottom plate only for any moisture that may be transferred from the slab. Once you have the bottom plate installed, you'll have a point of reference where the top plate is going to be. And before attaching the top plate, put a couple studs up there to hold it up and then make sure everything is level and square before attaching your top plate. Now if your wall is like mine and it runs parallel with the ceiling joist, you can add some boards in between the ceiling joist above and then mark the location. That way you can screw the top plate into that to make your wall more secure in addition to screwing it into the top plate of the adjoining walls that it's butted up against. You can also toenail or screw the bottom plate into the bottom plate of the adjoining walls as well. Here you can see I'm attaching now the sides of the wall. They did not meet up with another stud of the adjoining wall, so I'm screwing up into the top plate and to the bottom plate for each one to keep the sides of my wall secure before I start adding the studs in the middle. Once you have your studs in the middle cut to length, you can start to set them up. You wanna make sure that they're 16 inches on center. This will help if you have insulation like I do because this will be an exterior wall. It also help when you go to hang something, like a shelf in this instance, on the wall, you'll know exactly where the studs are. When you're installing the studs, you can either toenail them in, or you can use screws like I am to attach them to the top plate and the bottom plate. While you're doing this, make sure your level is handy so that your studs are level vertically. All right, once you have the wall up and you got all the studs level and installed, then you can start the fun stuff, putting insulation up, then eventually putting your sheetrock up, doing the finish work, and then you're pretty much done. Now for this project, I actually had to create two non-load bearing walls, and before I could open up our new closet, I had to seal it off from the exterior of the house. Many people don't know the proper way to take down a wall, and it's just as simple as going to... Kung Fu kicking our new closet wall in was definitely the highlight of this project. And that's it. That's all you gotta do. Here you can see where we put our new closet door in this formal living space, and now we're gonna add another non-load bearing wall to close it in with French doors. We'll start by installing our bottom plate like we did before, and in this room there's baseboards and carpet, so we'll remove those as well as the tack strip so we can install our wall. After you secure your bottom plate to the foundation, again, I use concrete screws for mine, you can go ahead and line up your top plate, making sure it's level and directly overhead the bottom plate, and then you can secure it to the ceiling joist above. Remember, you can toenail it or screw it into the top and bottom plates of the adjoining wall. After that, you can go ahead and cut your wall studs to length, and then mark 16 inches on center along the top and bottom plates where they'll be located. If you get your screw started and your wall studs before you hold them up, you can easily attach them to the top and bottom plates. Once you have all the framing work done, you can go ahead and start with the finishing work and put up your drywall. Now typically you don't add insulation to an interior wall, but I knew this was going to be used as a bedroom and an office, so I did it for soundproofing. Because there was a step down into the new room, we had to add a threshold, that way the French doors wouldn't be floating in midair. In this video, I didn't explain how I ran electricity to the closet, but if you like, you can click the link and it'll bring you to my video on how to add a light in a closet. Because these walls haven't existed before, you might need to do some paint matching 
as well as get new baseboards, crown molding, and any other trim that matches the rest of the walls. For this room, we decided to use Agreeable Gray, which is a very popular Sherwin-Williams color. And instead of going back with carpet while we were already doing baseboards, we decided to go ahead and put in luxury vinyl plank that locks in. After you have all your trim attached, you can go ahead and caulk it, paint it, clean everything else up, and then you'll be done. Not only can adding a wall like this make your home more functional, but in this instance, by spending a little over $1,000, we we're able to boost the home's value by over $10,000 by adding an extra bedroom. All right, guys, I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, comment below. If you like it, like it. Please subscribe, and as always, peace and God bless.